In this section, we will actually implement by hand in Python the perceptron algorithm and we'll explain the unit step function and how that arrives at making predictions. And then we'll see an improvement to the perceptron model known as the Adeline model and we'll introduce the concept linear activation function and we'll see how that smooths the training process out. So let's get started. So we'll need NumPy, Matplotlib, and Pandas for this. So these are our import statements. Import NumPy as NP. From NumPy.random import seed. Import Pandas as PD. Import Matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. That's our back-end plotting library. And we also want to bring in the listed color map from matplotlib. We'll need this for a convenience function we're making. And we want to bring in the RC params, which is a dictionary of configurations and settings. And we're going to set the plot size to 10 by 5. And RC params is a dict, so we can access that via the key. And in this case, we want the figure.fig size key. And we're going to set the value of that equal to 10 comma 5, so a 10 by 5 plot. And we'll set matplotlib to be inline, which means the graphs will display uh, inline in the notebook. So now let's define our perceptron class in Python. So first we'll start with the doc strings that explain what parameters are expected for each instance. And there are really two that we're going to use for this. Ada, which is a float value, and this is the learning rate that we're going to use to train our model on. And this will be a value between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. And then n iter, which is the it's an int, and this is the number of passes or epochs over the training data that we're going to make. And now each one of our instantiated and fitted perceptron classes will have a, a few attributes attached to them. The first is w underscore, and this is a 1D array, and this array holds our weights after we've fit the model to the training data. And it'll also have an errors underscore attribute. And this is a list. And this keeps track of the number of misclassifications in every epoch as we're training our model and fitting to the training data. So then the next step is to define the initialization method. So double underscore in it double underscore and this has two default this has default values for our two parameters so eta we're going to set equal to 0 0.01 and n iter the number of iterations we're going to set equal to 10 as a default value and we will set self.ada equal to eta and self.n iter equal to n iter and now we're ready to move on to a few other methods So now we're going to define the fit method, and this accepts two parameters, capital X, which is our feature set, and lowercase y, which are the target values that go along with our feature set. And so we'll just specify what these parameters should be. So capital X is array-like and it has the shape equal to n samples as the number of rows and n features as the number of columns and again these are the training vectors where n samples is the number of samples and n features is the number of features in our training set
and then as I said lowercase y again is array like with shape equal to n samples so the number of samples each sample has one and only one classification target value and now the fit method once it's called it just returns the class object that we already created so we need to initialize our weight vector which is self.w underscore and we'll use the zeros function from numpy so np.zeros and we're going to set this equal to one plus the shape of our training features so the number of columns that's the one index 2x dot shape and then we'll set self dot errors underscore as an empty list initially and then what we need to do is we need to loop through our training data for the specified number of iterations so self dot n iter we use an underscore because we're actually not going to use that iteration value for anything we just need to cycle through for the given number and we're going to set our errors which is a local variable think of it as a counter variable equal to zero through each iteration we'll reset that and we we'll use that to keep track of the number of errors that we have and then we're going to loop through each combination of samples and the target for that given sample and these are split up already because we have our capital X and lowercase y which are our training features and then our target values we're going to temporarily bind those back together and we do that with zip and we get our update value by applying the learning rate self dot to the error from our prediction so we haven't defined the predict method just yet we'll do that down below but you can see the target subtract the predicted value from the target multiply that by our error or our learning rate and that's our update and then we're going to set our weight vector for each of the features so remember the first value in the weight vector uh, doesn't doesn't correspond to a particular feature so we take a slice of self dot w underscore one colon and we apply the update times the sample and we put that for the weight values and then we just apply the update to the first weight vector index and then we say for errors we're going to add the error if after calculating the update it's not equal to zero so remember if our target exactly matches if our predicted value exactly matches our target value then the difference is zero which means there's no update right so we've we've learned the model and then after the iteration we're going to append the error counter to our errors list so self dot errors underscore dot append errors and we will return self for this so now we need to define the net input method and this takes a single parameter capital X which is our training features and as the name implies this calculates the net input which is just a linear combination of the weights and the feature vector and in order to calculate that we need to take uh, the dot product 
of those two. Because uh, we can't multiply two vectors by each other, right? So we are two column vectors by each other. So we have to transpose one and then take the the product of that. So NP dot dot, capital X, and then our weight vector for the features in X. And then we tack on self dot W, which was our initial weight. And we actually call to this from the predict method, which we're defining next. And again, this takes two parameters, self and capital X. And this returns the class labels after the unit step function, which is our net input function. And so we're saying return numpy. Where self dot net input x is greater than or equal to 0, 0.0. So after calculating net input, if that number is greater than 0, we're going to assign the class label 1. Otherwise, we're going to assign the class label negative 1. And that's pretty much it for that.